I've hunted this area probably almost 20 times and I really feel like over the years I've forged a relationship with this mountain range and so it's something that's extra special because I'm going back to some place that's familiar and yet in some aspects it's unfamiliar. Every time I go up there I discover something different and you get up there and the experience on the mountain is different and that's one of the things that keeps luring me back is that feeling of familiarity yet at the same time unknown. Leaving the shop, it's a little bit after five, I'm gonna go pick some llamas up. And uh, <laughs> it's always a little anxiety leaving the shop for 10 days and all the work that's gotta get done. But uh, if you don't unplug, you never go. Well, the sun just came up, shining down through the trees, gotta step my game up. Been hunting hard, but man, I got to man up. Cause it ain't over yet. A late evening food plot hunt, just ahead of a cold front, is already on my mind. And the sun just came up. Yeah, we're talking way out. Where the corn rows and the dirt rows, they run out I got the perfect stand and man, I got to stay out uh, 6 o'clock p.m. on the 15th, so we're five days into the season now I had heard from another guy that I talked to that was here opening day and said there was almost 20 trucks at the trailhead and uh, now including ours, I think there's around five so cut down substantially it's still warm, it's still hot. It's uh, almost 90. So we're gonna hike well into the night tonight to try to avoid the heat. We've got about 10 miles to go to get in and I'm hoping to get about eight of those 10 miles in. And then the last couple miles is really tough. So we'll save that for the morning. I'm anxious to get up there. It's been a whole year since I've been back in here and I'm itching. So are these guys. <laughs> It's uh, about 20 after 10 and uh, we made it most of the way in. Actually got thrown a bit of a curveball. We ran into a couple other bow hunters that were hiking on their way out and uh, they said that two other guys were came in ahead of us today and went right to the spot we were planning on going. So we're going into plan B area and uh, I think we're probably pretty close to eight miles, maybe eight and a half miles in right now so whew, man been up since 3 30 this morning it's been a long day i am ready for bed Monday, we 
rolled in about 8.30 or so into camp and got that all set up and took a nap, caught up on some much needed sleep. And now we are headed over to the ridge there to glass a basin on the backside. There's some good bedding areas. Hopefully we'll be able to pick up a buck bedded in there and make a play. And then tonight, um, or later this afternoon, I got to make about a six mile round trip to go get water. It's a dry camp up here and nearest water is quite a ways away. And so we've got about 15 gallons of water storage. I'll bring the llamas with me and load them down like a Sherpa. this year I think so far we've seen seven seven bucks and a handful of does everything's down down low and and I ran into a group of bucks further down the ridge with some does but they're bedded way down there the junipers with shale you know hillside above them and just no you know, even possibility for a stock so it's going to be interesting to see how this hunt plays out. Uh, I think it's going to be any buck, no matter spike, fork, or <laughs> something of the sort. It's going to be opportunity. And so far, we haven't had any. So we're going to go check out a spring over here to see if we can get some water out of it. Glad I filled it all up there. Suck that moisture right down. Full serving of vegetables. Now I'm healthy. That sucker cool off for half hour. Sun's just coming up, but you can't see it because it's so smoky down here, up here. And we popped over the ridge here, and uh, we skylined ourselves when we came over, and we bumped out a buck down the bottom of this cut right here, unfortunately. But the good news is at least there was deer up this high, because everything we've been seeing has been really low. So we're going to glass this a little bit more and then drop down a little lower, look into the adjacent little draws here and hopefully we can find something. Last year I stalked a group of bucks up here on this side so I don't cross our fingers maybe we'll get lucky again. late morning of uh, mid morning of day two we found a group of four bucks down in the bottom but they were bedding in the uh, mountain mahoganies and just low cover around them so there's you know no avenue of approach that same group of bucks i saw yesterday they were hanging in the same area within probably a couple hundred yards of where they were this morning and everything's hanging low when you get down lower into that mountain mahogany just trying to stalk something down in that stuff it's super thick and 
not good cover from coming in from above so we're gonna give it a while kick back here for a bit and there's a bedding area in the next basin over and hopefully something goes and beds in a conducive spot for a stock over there but it's looking pretty grim so i was taking a nap up the hill dakota ran down here looked over the edge and there's a buck bedded under the bedding rock down here in this basin so it's uh, 11 o'clock now and um, i'm gonna make a big loop around come in from above them and then try and get up on top of that rock or right alongside it depending there's a four by three a smaller buck that's bedded in the next group of trees right below the rock and a doe right there and then down the hill further under the next group of trees is two does so the only thing i've really got to worry about is there's a group of trees to the right that's fairly dense that might have a deer um, in there i can't see from this angle so as i go up i'm just going to continually glass and then hopefully there's no spoilers in there but i'm hoping for a sub 10 yard shot here in the next couple hours it's going to take me probably an hour and a half to get around onto them so it's going to be a long stalk That didn't go quite as planned. <laughs> it was uh, all working to, to spec. I got down in within probably 30 or 40 yards of him and then I saw an antler. So I knew that that smaller buck had gotten up and came over and bedded back down below the big one. So the best chance was shooting that smaller buck. It looked to me like he was facing this way, which was perfect because then I just changed my approach. I came around further behind the rock and then I was going to step out from behind the rock, keep his head hidden behind the rock, and then have a shot right at his body. And I figured it'd be, a, you know, less than 20 yard shot on him. And I got all the way down the edge of that rock. And then I heard way up the ridge, and this huge gust of wind. I could hear it coming all the way down the ridge. And I was like, oh no. And sure enough, boom, hit me in the back. And then all I saw was that doe's head just come over. 
over the top of the rock and she was out of there and the whole all of them blew out. Man, what a heartbreaker. I didn't realize that you had uh, plopped down the canyon at all until you were like maybe halfway down, a third yeah. of the way down. Yeah, I made pretty good time. Um, I think all in all, I figured it would take me an hour and a half and it only took me an hour to get there. And it's crazy because I mean, it was high noon when those things blew out, when that wind changed direction. And normally, I mean, the sun's been baking this hillside for hours now. And usually you have a nice steady thermal, but I don't know, I guess the thermals from the back, from the canyon on the backside just overpowered them and just blasted it. Yeah, it's been a heck of a windy day today and last night, so I'm not entirely surprised. But yeah, yeah. It's a bummer. Totally. Yeah, that was a good, good opportunity right there. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna eat some because I'm dying. <laughs> All right. So I decided to pull the plug. I feel like quite the quitter slash loser, but. This is ridiculous up here. We're so badly smoked out. It's like probably smoking a couple packs of cigarettes a day. Can't see all that far. The deer aren't in here. And this wind is howling so hard that I couldn't shoot an arrow 20 yards without it going sideways. So it just seems like I can be more productive back at the shop and getting orders done. So we're uh, gonna get up real early in the morning and pull out. We've been smoked out parched out from water <laughs> and uh, no game so time to fold it up and head out <laughs> 